Good afternoon. Uh, so good to have you here with us today. We're coming to you from uh, Pleasant Green Baptist Church and uh, going to share with you from the word of the Lord today. I trust that you've had a good week this week. We have gotten some good news this week. Praise the Lord uh, that uh, they're telling us that on the 20th of the month that we're going to be able to do some in-person services. So that's a, that's a praise for the Lord right there, folks, that we're going to be able to be back inside the house of God, uh, worshiping the Lord here in the church uh, by the by the 20th. I believe that's on a Wednesday night, so we can get together for that Wednesday for Bible study. So thank you so much for coming. I hope you've had a good week this week and that you have uh, uh, felt and known the blessing of the Lord uh, in uh, the week that you've spent. As we get started, we want to welcome you here if this is the first time that you've been with us, and uh, we're going to turn to the Word of the Lord now. At this time, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, about giving, Godward giving, and uh, I want to share with you out of Acts, the fourth chapter, if you want to turn there. We'll be in Acts, the fourth chapter. We'll be reading from verse 32 through 37, and um, let's uh, let's pick this up. This will be a great time to look at this. Right now, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. People are reaching out, trying to help other people, and that's encouraging. And uh, I believe the Bible speaks to us as a Christians and as a church that um, that we should give uh, because of the goodness of, uh, of the love of God that he gave to us and that we return that back to him as we uh, bless one another in fellowship. So let's look in Acts chapter 4, verse 32 through 37. And here's what the word of God says. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that, that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according to as he need, had need. And Jose, who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Your Father, we come to you today, Lord. We love you. We thank you for the day that you blessed us with today. We thank you, dear Lord, that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, that you've given to us the opportunity, dear Lord, to know you as our Savior, for as many as would believe upon you and receive the things, dear God, that you've offered, dear God, confessing of our sins. Lord, we just want to thank you for that. Thank you for those who've been faithful with the message of Jesus Christ down through the ages, dear God, that gave us the opportunity to hear it by your grace. Father, we want to pray, dear Lord, for every need that's out there today, dear God, all the sickness, all the disease, those who are hurting, dear God, those who have uh, suffered uh, anguish and depression, dear Lord, during this time of of uh, quarantine, dear God, that you would just be, be with their, them, Lord, be with their hope. Father, strengthen them. Father, I pray for the message today, dear God, not only that I'd be sharing, but Lord, that it'll be shared, dear God, around the world by other men uh, who stand behind the pulpit, that you would strengthen, that you would bless them, that you would give them the fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask these things today in the lovely name of Jesus, we pray, amen. So as I said this morning, I want to talk to you about uh, God we're giving. You know, it's a biblical principle that we would not only give to God, but that also that we would work with others and that we would bless others with the things that God's blessed us with. And so uh, what I want to do with you today is I want to share with you uh, from the Word of God in regards to some things that have to do with giving not only to God, but, but to others. And the first thing that I want to share with you, if you're following along in verse 32, to call your attention to is that the Bible says the multitude of them that believe. So when we're talking about this this morning, certainly every one of us should be concerned about his fellow man. Certainly every one of us should try to reach out and touch people's lives. Uh, but, but specifically this morning, what we're talking about is we're talking to those who the Bible calls believers or those that believed. And that, so when I read that, the question that comes to my mind is, what is it that they believed? Well, if we turned over to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we would be reading about this very same group of people. And here's what the scripture says about these people. Acts 2, 42 says, They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
so what we're looking at then is we're looking at the notion that they believe the things that have been taught to them by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ had taken the teachings that Jesus had given to them and were passing it on to the next generation of people who would be Christians. If we go over to the uh, 28th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, we could read in verse 19 and 20 as Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said this, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So the thing that they believed was, they believed what Jesus Christ said. And, and so I, I just want to share with you this morning that if you and I are, are, are Christians, if you and I are followers of Jesus Christ, if you and I have read the word of God as it has been passed down to the apostles who recorded it uh, from the Lord Jesus Christ, then you and I are numbered among those that I'm talking to this morning, those who know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The authoritative word of God is the doctrine upon which the church was founded and upon which the true church will continue steadfastly without compromise to stand on. And so if Jesus says it, if the word of God says it, then we believe it to be so. And because we believe it to be so, we do that which God has called us to do. So as we uh, turn our attentions this morning to the word of God, the second thing is not only are we going to talk to those who are believers in what Jesus said, but I want to point out to you what it was that they gave. If you look back with me again at verse 32 this morning, the Bible speaks to us in verse 32 that as he talked to the believers, the multitude of them that believed, the Bible says they were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. So what we see in the scriptures this morning is that they gave of their fellowship. Uh, verse 32 would indicate to us that they all believed and were of one heart and soul. We've already referenced Acts, referenced Acts 2 and 42, but Acts 2 and 42 indicated to us uh, that they were fellowshipping in all respects. Their fellowships knit them together at the level of the heart and the soul, the Bible tells us. Uh, their relationships with one another were intimate as a result of the intimacy that they had uh, with the relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Ephesians chapter three, we read this, verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is, is named. And so the Bible tells us that the family of God is, is brought together, it's, it, it's affiliated, it's connected, that we fellowship and are named after the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus we have been called Christians. Because believers uh, have, have been born again in Christ, uh, we have a kindred relationship in that we are family, that is brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. So I want you to know that we're more than acquaintances. I want you to know that we're more than people who live in the same region. But the Bible tells us that you and I as Christians have been born again. And because of that, we're brothers and sisters of, uh, of one another, begotten by the blood of Jesus Christ. We see not only that they were not only attached to one another, but they were passionate about like things, uh, that they were passionate about like things, and all of those things were things that centered around Christ Jesus. One, uh, one of the things I wanna tell you this morning is that as Christians that we ought to have in common some like passions. Now, I know that all different people from different places and different walks and different races have, have uh, different things that, uh, that they're drawn to. I'm not telling you that everybody ought to like necessarily the same things. I'm not telling you that everybody ought to enjoy the same hobbies. If we look at our own congregation, we find out that there are people who have different attractions, even as far as their families and then their mates. Uh, one man you see, he'd be married to a lady that's short. Another man would be married to a lady that's tall. There might be another woman and, and, and she's married to a man with dark hair. There might be a, another lady that's married to a redhead. Some of you are going to drive Pontiacs and, and Cadillacs. and Some of you are going to drive Chevrolets, Dodges, Chryslers, Fords, whatever the case might be. But there's differences in us. But the one thing that I want you to know is that there should be a common centeredness around Jesus Christ and all of us should be lovers of Christ and the things of Christ if we indeed are brothers and sisters in Christ. 
One of the many dangers of not living a Christ-centered life is the absence of the fellowship and the cooperation and the support from other believers who view Christ as most important. Folks, I want to tell you something, that we ought to be drawn together in our relationship with God to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And in that, there's a preservation in our life that comes from the level of accountability and support that comes from the body of Christ. One of the things that I want you to understand today is that Satan uses the vulnerable, vulnerable position in our life when we do not have that common uh, commonality of, of God-centeredness, that he uses that as a vulnerable position in our life and an opportunity to attack our faith in God, to weaken our walk with the Lord and doubt the validity of our salvation. And in so doing, he silences the voice and the effective witness that God has intended for you and I to be. Simply put, that when we are united together, not only with God, but with our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we become stronger and that we are more effective in reaching out to those who are lost and undone without Jesus to call them to a relationship with the Lord as the Holy Spirit of God works together with us in our life. I want you to know this morning that the plugged-in believer quite literally becomes invested to the point of becoming soulmates, not only with the Lord Jesus Christ, but with fellow followers of Christ. You know, the other night, I and most of you that know me know that I have brothers and, uh, a brother and sisters. I have three sisters and one brother. And my brother is a couple years older than I am. And uh, the other night, uh, I, had, uh, I had talked to him. He was talking back and forth with me through text. And it was pretty getting on pretty up late in the night. And so uh, I, I, some of the things he was asking me about, I was trying to send him some technical drawings and stuff on something and I was having trouble maybe conveying what was going on. So I picked up the phone and I just called him. And one of the reasons that I called him was I knew that he was my brother and he'd be okay with me calling on him uh, in, the, in, the, in the later times of the afternoon or in the evening, during the later times of the evening. And as we got on the phone, we began to talk about that thing. And then we begin to talk about other things that we had in common. We sit there and we talked and my wife got up and went to bed. My kids got up and went to bed and we just continued to talk on and we were laughing and we were fellowshipping and having a good time uh, <clears throat> in our family and our relationship and, and his brothers in the Lord. And, and we talked about church. We talked about hobbies. We talked about our families. We talked about a lot of different stuff until I realized that we had been on the phone for almost three hours. And I said, Phil, we've got to get off the phone. Uh, it's, uh, it's been about three hours since we've been on here. And so the point that I'm making is <clears throat> that when we have things in common with our brothers and sisters in Christ because of what Jesus Christ did, then it's easy for us to work together for the same goal and purpose of pointing people to the Lord Jesus. One man was asked to define a true friend many, many years ago, and he said that a true friend are two people that have one soul dwelling in two bodies. And what he was saying was that uh, you become so alike that you begin to uh, begin to think about things that matter to one another, and you begin to function as a unit that uh, that you're no longer uh, no longer two people who are friends. But you become uh, one person in the in the sense that your goals are common and that you're working for a common good, and that is friends in the relationship. So they gave of their fellowship one into the other, and then the other thing that I want to point out to you is that they gave of their possessions. If you uh, go back with me in the scriptures, uh, we'll turn again back to the thirty-second verse. The Bible says they believed. They were of one heart and one soul, and neither said any of them that all of the things which he owned was, uh, was his own, but they had all things in common. And so as we uh, turn to the scriptures, we find out that they gave of their possessions. They embraced this union not only in their prayers and their practices, but they embraced this union in their properties. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I've got, I got something today that I'm gonna share with you that's a praise. I thought I'd wait and I would maybe share it later on when we got back to church together, but most of you all know that the uh, the large percentage of, of my my income comes from the barbershop, the business that I own. And, and uh, when, uh, when they came in and they quarantined all this stuff out and they shut us down, uh, it really it really took a knock on us pretty hard we were looking at. And I said, and I told my wife, I said, you know, there's uh uh, if this goes very long, we're probably going to lose our business. It was just to that point that when I sit down and I did all of the math on it and, 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 and figured the figures that it just was not looking good. And so uh, after we had been closed one day, 
we had a water line that broke in our, in our in our yard and it was on our side of the meter. So we were responsible for that. And and we had to call out a guy to come out with a backhoe, a plumber to get to work. And, and I was watching as the money was going out, but the money wasn't coming in. And I thought, man, there is no way we're gonna make it through this. No way that the business is gonna stay alive. We're gonna have to shut this thing down and start all over when it works back up. But, but I want you to know what God did. And he did this through the family of God. It, uh, it, it wasn't very long that I got a call from somebody that I know. And they said, hey, we want to do something to help you. We, we heard that you had a problem with that water line. And so um, they said, we're going to do something to help you. Uh, in, in their mind, they were saying this. And, and, and somebody left an envelope that had some money in it. Folks, I want you to know that the money that they, that they left us was almost exactly what it cost to get that line fixed in the yard. So God came through for that. And, and I began to talk to uh, one of the ladies that, uh, and, and if you're out there and you're hearing this, I want you to know how that this worked out at the hand of God, a Christian lady that works with me. And one of the concerns that we had was uh, the bills coming in into the shop to be able to take care of those, but also to try to keep the household running and the things that we need. And so uh, she contacted me and she said, listen, she said, I'll pay you a booth rental every week. And she said, I understand that uh, that you're going to have to continue to pay the bills on the shop if we're going to keep it open and have anything to come back to. And I said, yeah. And I, and I said, I want to give you the option if you want to uh, just leave and, and, and let's see if I can keep things going and then you come back and I'll pick you up, that's fine. We'll try to do that or if you wanna stay, uh, we'll, we'll try to work that out and do that. She said, listen, what I wanna do is I wanna to continue to pay my booth rental every week, every week to you uh, so that in the end of all of this that that there's a better chance that we can come back. And that was a that was a Christian sister in the Lord that works with me that I dearly love her and I dearly love our family. And so she stepped up and she did that and it helped us. And 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 so uh, as as time went on, we would we would find a need that was coming up through the course of this. And I, I went to the mailbox one day and uh, there was a civic group that was out there that uh, they had heard that there were some some folks out there who uh, had small businesses that were having trouble in our in our little community that we live in. And they had written a check out to us to help us out for a, uh, for an amount of money. And so uh, we took that and we put it in the in the kitty to help pay bills and. And uh, at the same time, uh, one of the men that was involved with that, uh, uh, he decided that he wanted to help above what the group did. And he sent us a little something to help. And then uh, the very same day, I went to the mailbox and somebody else saw that we had a need and, and, and they were brothers and sisters in Christ who are a part of another church and their mission group said, hey, we're trying to help some folks out who are struggling and have small businesses in our area. And we wanted to give just a little bit to help you. And so they sent a little bit and, and somebody else sent a little bit. And I thought, man, this is, this is crazy. I never would have dreamed that people would have stepped up like that to help us during this difficult time. And so uh, as, as we worked through the process, uh, there was there was some money that was coming in and, and, and it was helping us and and I got a call from a guy lived off in another state that is a is a a distant relative of mine I might, I guess I should say a close relative of my wife's and, and I'd married into the family and and this gentleman he said uh, he said listen he said I've got the means that I can help somebody and he said I want to help somebody and it's my understanding that you're going to be a prolonged time with your business down he said what I want to do I want to help you some he said God's blessed me uh, right now and I want to bless somebody else and help somebody else and so uh, he sent and helped some uh, helped us out some folks I want you to listen to this now I didn't ask anybody for anything but this was good people that God was speaking to their heart to help us out through these difficult times. And, and uh, so late uh, late yesterday evening, I had got home and, and those of you all that know me know that uh, that I try to work a little bit here and there on the side and I, and I try to help uh, with some dog training and do some stuff like that that I've been skilled at over the years. And so I brought a few dollars in, uh, being able to do some of that stuff. And I got a call last night from my, my son-in-law, it was pretty late. And uh, he said, uh, we're going to come over 
He said, I want to come over and, uh, and see you for a little bit tonight. And he come over. And when, when they got there, we visited around for several hours. And he said, listen, he said, I got something I want to give you. He said, I ran into somebody today that heard that uh, that uh, you were having some trouble. And they said that they wanted to, to, wanted to try to help you out during this difficult time. And so... Uh, he handed me some money that uh, this individual had given said want to remain anonymous and I don't know who it was but whoever it was if you're hearing this I want you to know that God used you to a blessing to us to help us through a difficult time and I know it was the hand of the Lord and I, and I know it was a brother a brother or sister in Christ is all that I know and he gave me that and I said hey I really appreciate this and I want you to know that that through the course of all this we've got uh, uh, we've got about 18 more days till we can open back up. But I want you to know this today, that not one bill of ours is left undone, that we haven't been hungry throughout this time. And, and it was because of the grace of God and it was because of those people who are believers in Christ, who had things in common with us, some of which we we, we don't even know, that, that they did what the Bible said and they gave their possessions. And I'm having a hard time not getting broke up here, but they gave their possessions because of the love of God and they blessed us, folks, and they helped us through this difficult time. Uh, they embrace one another. Here's what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother has need, and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So what I'm saying this morning is this to the WMU group who, who gave to help us, that, that you demonstrated the love of God in that, to the, uh, to the other group that uh, reached out and helped us, to the individuals that have reached out and helped us. The Bible says that, uh, that one of the qualities that we see in the people who have the love of God is that they take uh, of, of what they have during difficult times and they bless other people in the same way that Jesus gave of himself to bless us. We know the love of God because he gave up everything for us, even unto his own life, that we should do the same and we should bless others. And when we possess this world's good and we and we refuse to give them to help our brothers in need, he asks the question, how can we say that God's love is dwelling in us? They gave of their possessions to bless others. And most importantly, we read again in the scriptures, if you follow back with me, I want to go back up to verse 33 of Acts chapter four. He says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. And neither was there any among them that lacked. Folks, I want you to see the, the last thing it, we read about in this passage is, not only did they give of their fellowship, and not only did they give of their possessions, but the Bible says that the apostles, the preachers of God, uh, gave of God's message to the people. They gave of the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They continued telling others about the goodness of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary when he came and suffered and bled and died so that men might be forgiven of their sins and that he was resurrected, that they could have a new life in him. Uh, that was all that they had that was really worth anything anyway. And they gave it. Folks, I want you to see this morning that the gospel message was worth everything to everyone. And although many people don't, don't, don't understand that and don't know that, they gave of the most precious thing, the message of God's most precious thing when he sent his one and only begotten son to die on the cross for the remission of the sins of the world. So they gave of their best regardless of what it would cost them. When we turn back to the scriptures, lastly, I want to read to you from verse 34. The Bible says, neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them and brought the price of the things which were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Jose, who, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Lastly, as I close, I want you to see the result 
when God's people gave of their fellowship because it was the fellowship of God that brought them commonly together to love one another. When they gave of their possessions because the love of God was there, they cared for one another and they took care of the needs of one another because of the message of God that was shared by the apostles that, that, that called men into salvation. All this was possible through Jesus Christ. And not one person did anything did without anything the scripture said that they had need of because everybody was willing and sacrificial to give not only to each other but to give to God so that everyone's needs were met because they all cared for God as a result of the deep love that they, he had for them and that they had for one another. And folks, Barnabas serves at the end of this as an example of the type of sacrificial giving that was going on in the early church. You see, I want you to understand something today, that the only reason that it's possible that I can stand here today and share the word of God with you it's because God loved me so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to save me from my sins, to cleanse my heart and forgive me of the things that I've done. That the only reason that, that I'm here today and that you're here today as brothers and sisters in the Lord is because the Bible teaches us we love because he loved us first. And the only reason it's possible that we have this church that we can come back to on the 20th and we can study together and fellowship together is because of the relationship that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. And here's my testimony. Not only did we not lack anything, but one of the things that, uh, that I've told my, my church, my treasurer during this time, I'm a believer that we ought to give. And I told him, I said, one of the things that's really bothered me is that as my income is dropped off, I'm not able to give to the level of tithing and giving that I want to give to the church to help the ministries. And he kept telling me, he kept saying, hey, do what you can. God's going to take care of it. And here's the thing. Through all of this, as I've looked at it, I've been able still to give. That, that God's blessed me to be able to give. And uh, I called my brother and I'd ask him, I'd say, how's the church doing? And he'd say, oh, we're doing all right. Folks, it's amazing what God can bring together when we put our faith and trust in him and we fellowship with him. So I want to encourage you this morning, be faithful to God. God's faithful to us. Have fellowship with God. God wants to fellowship with us. He says, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Have fellowship with one another. See after the needs of one another. As I close, I want to tell you this, this morning that um, I was talking to a friend of mine and he really doesn't have much. This is an older gentleman that I have, uh, I've been seeing in on him for uh, several years and he doesn't have much. He doesn't have much of much family left and I think he's got one sister left and and um, at times we've had to go by and help him with food and and uh, help him with needs different times and but a good man a, a man that just you just love him when you meet him I saw him to him the other day he said uh, he said I want to help you and I told him I said hey he said, I said uh, right now I said things have been hard but God's blessed me and I shared with him some of the things that I've shared with you this morning and I said, you know, it's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes to take a blessing from somebody like that when they give it. I said, you get used to wanting to help other people. And then God gets, gives you an opportunity when you're in a hard situation that other people helps them. And I just want you to know this morning that we always hear it's more blessed to give than we receive. And I, and I believe there's a lot of truth to that. And there's some substance to that. And I hope that you have been blessed and, and, and I hope that you've had what you've needed. And I hope that you've been able to bless somebody else. And I'm reminded this morning of the little five loaves and two fishes the little boy brought to Jesus and he gave it to Jesus. And when he gave it to Jesus, Jesus filled, fed the multitude of people and there was something left over. I want you to know, I want to encourage you with this. When it's all said and done, 
When it's all said and done, there's gonna be something left over if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's go to prayer this morning. And uh, I thank you for tuning in with us. Father, we come to you. We thank you today for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, dear God, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, dear God. Thank you for the love, dear God, that people have one for the other. Dear Lord, that, that, that true people who love Jesus, Lord, they love other people. And Father, I thank you for that. Father, it's my prayer, dear God, that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ will be evident, Lord, in this message of love and giving, dear God, that we've shared of the early church and the testimony, dear God, that's been shared of the people of God that have blessed us through a difficult time in our life. Father, I pray if there's one that doesn't know Jesus as our Lord and Savior out there, Lord, that they could hear the message of the cross this morning. They would accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We thank you in Christ's name, amen. To our church family, I'm going to be getting back with you in the next week or two here before church starts back up. We have got uh, some things that we have to do uh, and try to get uh, some work done here at the building, some cleanup, some, some requirements we're going to have that are maybe a little bit different for a while. And so we'll get back with you and uh, stay tuned for that. I'll either text you or I'll put something out on the church's personal uh, membership page or call you and let you know what we're doing. Uh, but uh, we're going to be back in the Lord's house pretty quick. So thank God for that. Love you. If you need anything, give us a call. Uh, if there's a need that we can help you with, and we'll be more than glad to do it. God bless you. Have a good weekend.